certainly. Welcome to Stranger Connections, where I celebrate wonderfully weird people and quirky stories. I'm your curious beast and host, Lisa David Olson, the practically world famous interactive speaker and business humorist. So reach out to me if you want to re energize your team or have an improv workshop, whatever you want. Reach out, we'll make it happen. Today, I am pretty thrilled to have a guest on that I've known for a while, but we haven't exactly gone out to lunch yet. So we're not exactly friends, but we're darn close. And uh, one of the things that he says is the process of getting to know yourself is difficult, but deeply satisfying. And he talks all about the balancing act. And we're going to get into that. And I happen to have downloaded a freebie on his website, which if you're seeing the video, it is a personal planning guidebook. So that that has been really fun. So please welcome Andrew Tempty, an author, podcaster, educator, former CEO. He's even a musician and a lifelong learner. Thank you so much for being here. And am I saying Andrew or Andy? What are you today? Is it Andrew for business and Andy on stage? Yeah, it's uh, kind of don't just don't call me late for dinner, please. <laughs> don't on that on that meal we're going to have when we're actual friends. That's right. Well, you're from the La Crosse, Wisconsin area. Anybody that is around has seen some of your work, whether it would be the business side of it with Kaplan Professional. Um, you've done so many other things business wise that you can share how much you want to. But I know that you've got two different books out: Balancing Act, Teach, Coach, Mentor, Inspire. And the balanced business, building organizational trust and accountability through smooth workflows. So is this all about work-life balance? Is that your jam? Well, it's uh, it's a bit more than that, but it's it kind of starts with the balance between work and life. Uh, I have had struggles with that in the past, as many uh, senior executives uh, struggle with uh, you know, quieting the ego and uh, being present and uh, and especially with family and friends that the the constant chase of the ideas and the growth and more, 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 more gets mm. in the way of uh, really enjoying uh, one's life. and and as you at the top of the show, uh, pointed out in my personal planning guidebook, really understanding and connecting with one's personal purpose so that you can align that with the work that you're doing. And when you align your personal purpose with the work that you're doing, uh, all of a sudden, this concept of work versus life uh, starts to kind of go away and you are living your purpose through uh, your personal life and your and your professional life. You can bring more of your whole self into the world of work. You can be more present and you know just generally more comfortable with the human that you are. Uh, I I, uh, I have a I have two podcasts. One is the uh, Saturday morning muse where I, you know, do kind of a five to 10 minute talk on all sorts of different things. And uh, it's why it's called the muse. Cause I muse about lots of stuff. Uh, and this week I'm talking about uh, uh, my personal battle with imposter syndrome. Uh, so it was really only after uh, I connected with my personal purpose that, you know, those feelings of, am I good enough? Uh, do I belong here? I'm a fraud, you know, that, and all of that, and the chase, 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 all that starts to settle down when you uncover your personal purpose and align it with your work. Do you think that also could come with age? Because I'm kind of finding that too, that the smaller yeah. things aren't as as important. Um, luckily, we grew up without social media uh, mm -hmm. being on the ready like that. And I was able to raise my kids without a phone in my hand, although I did have the VHS thing on my shoulder quite often. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I can't imagine trying to go through all that noise and chatter now. It would be harder to teach the younger generation the balance because they can work from the bus, the bathroom, 
the <laughs> the backyard. Yeah. They can work from anywhere. We didn't grow up that way. Well, I, you know, it's interesting. I'm I'm teaching. Uh, I'm finally back in the classroom at uh, the University of Wisconsin La Crosse after over 20 years of not being able to have that part of myself uh, come out and play. Nice, uh, which, which is really cool. And in uh, the class, which is based on my second book, uh, I the first day of class came in whiteboard. And I wrote down two words. I've got 34 students out there and they're all just wondering what I'm going to write down. And I wrote down self-love. That's how these you are, opened your class? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And so these are, these are management students, right? And they're all, oh, statistics and accounting and finance and graphs oh, and business. Data. And <laughs> we got to get stuff done. <laughs> and And here this guy walks in you know, former CEO, and I write down self-love. And they've all got these curious looks on their faces, like, what in the heck are we in for? And I turned around and I looked at him and I said, look, you are not going to be able to be great managers, uh, great leaders, and help those around you achieve their dreams, their goals, their aspirations, if you don't love what's going on in here first. If you don't like what's going on in, in between the ears, there's no way that you can fulfill your uh, dream, your vision, your uh, purpose of, of helping others. So, so, so this is where we start class and then it's all kind of fallen into place from there. You absolutely got their attention. That is oh, not yeah. ever been something, <laughs> you know, starting the class with two words, especially being that powerful and giving permission to think that way because yeah. most wouldn't, it's all about the grind and, and, uh, yep. doing your best and seek it, seek it. You can't do your best if you don't if you aren't settled within, but that's brilliant. Wow. Yeah. Total so goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm really, I'm hopeful that, uh, that at least these 34 students or some subset of them are going to walk out of class after this semester and have just a little bit different perspective and know that it's okay to, uh, to explore your how you feel about mm -hmm. your work and how it aligns with who you are as a human, uh, and, uh, and, 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 you know, take that, uh, take that, uh, that, that forward and do that exploit explore exploration a lot sooner than I did, mm, uh, and, right. you know, chasing other people's dreams, other people's ideas of success, that uh, that's just a train wreck waiting to happen. Mm. It's it's permission to slow it down and do better from the inside yeah. out. I love that because yeah. they're going to so. have a lot longer journey than we uh, had. You know, I mm. I spent you know forty years in the world of you know grind and work, and they're going to live longer. Their careers, they're going to have multiple careers. They're going to change careers. So getting a handle on that sooner rather than later is going to be beneficial. I uh, just adore that. And I, I think uh, that can be your next book. <laughs> because well, I'm sure you could go on about that. But I've, I've already got book three in the, in the back here. Well, of course you do, because the last thing you're going to do is, is stop. But <laughs> I sure. think that's great. So when you did mention imposter syndrome, I did catch that episode. Um, and I think that's really important just to touch on that. How do we avoid or do we find a way to embrace that which is imposter syndrome? And there's not one of us that hasn't felt it. Yeah. Well, just recognizing that you are feeling that is uh, is a real first step because you know the our our emotion. You know everything is just jumbled up in this in a spaghetti, which is our brains, right? And so it'd be super cool if we could compartmentalize all of our 
uh, psychological challenges and work on one at a time and, Ooh, I fix this one and Ooh, I fix that one. No, they, they, they're crawling all over each other uh, up there. So the, this, the, the, the place to start in my humble, uh, uh, opinion is with defining purpose. Why am I here? Why do I exist? And, hmm. and allowing oneself to, meditate to connect uh and quiet the 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 mind and and all that noise put the you talked about these uh these damn uh digital devices that the dang just, hand computers you kids have yeah these <laughs> you know you know just setting them down and I, these these are some of the things that i'm talking about about with with my class about uh tools to be present in the world of work um, so, so where you ask a very specific question, where you start is to define that, that your personal purpose, mine is to teach coach mentor and hopefully inspire. That's a tagline of my first book. So now that I've really connected with that, I know that my job in life is to, is to take what I've learned and help, uh, help pass it along, pay it forward. And that makes me feel great. And so if anybody's out there being nasty about what I'm up to, uh, sure. It hurts. It always, you know, it, it, imagining that you can just tune all that out and blissfully go through one's life and, uh, you know, st stop listening to the negative things that other other people have to say about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah th that's all BS. You, mm -hmm. you you are going to listen to it. You are going to feel feel it. Uh, sure, learning how to tamp those feelings down, uh, tune out the noise as best you can is uh, is certainly a skill that uh, that you continually work on and adopt. Uh, but you know you're you're never going to get you're you're never going to be able to tune all that out. Uh, so learning how to live with that, and 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 use purpose as your tool to come back to center and go. Yeah, people are talking negatively about me. That's okay. Is there anything that they're saying that I should be listening to and mm -hmm. uh, and kind of adjusting and yeah? Tuning? Why does it affect me? Right? Yeah, What's inside yeah. of me that it makes me even care yeah. at all? Right? Yeah. Is, is there some kernel of truth to that? Sure. Let's explore that. Let's nice. uh, you know. Let's let some of that in, but let's not let it weigh us down and completely paralyze us from moving forward. Which to many people. It becomes paralysis and oops, I put myself out there. Better never do that again. That, <laughs> you know, never, never going to do that again. I'm right. not going to, not going to go, not going to go there. So I'll just lock myself in my house and never put myself out there. So. Right. Oh, well said. I think that's really, really good. You know, find a way to be grounded, find out why it affects yeah. us at all and keep yeah. doing the thing because usually those that are saying the bad things are just kind of jealous or would never know how to start. And so it's right. easier to spew from a keyboard than to get up and take action. So yeah. I think that's Lisa's a great podcast reminder. is awful, blah, blah, blah. Well, what have you done? Yes. So right. Show, show me what you've done and <laughs> then we'll have a conversation and thank you. I'll listen to what you have to say. I'm not going to completely dismiss you, right. but you know, show, uh, show me your successes and Love show it. me your narrative, what you what what you aspire to be, and then let's have a conversation together. And so, with all the things that you're able to share and your your calming demeanor and and self love mm -hmm. as a kickoff to a new semester at college, what were you like as a kid? Were you always just chill and just hey, everybody's cool, or were you? Just, were you I'm going to be well, a CEO in the sandbox. <laughs> you know, I'm picturing my, it. My mom, I don't remember a whole lot from when I was little. Uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad about that. Actually, I, I have these warm, fuzzy memories of being, being a child, uh, and you know, we, I grew up in a, in a loving household where 
now as an adult, I know that there was some conflict there with my, uh, between my parents. Um, so it wasn't all happy and hunky dory all the time, but, uh, in my, uh, in my tween years and early teens, I was president of the student council. I was a straight A student, et cetera, et cetera. And then at 16, the wheels just start falling off the bus. Uh, I'm a, I'm a straight A student. I've got everything going for me and then drugs and alcohol, uh, friend groups that were at the end of the day, didn't, turn out to be great friend groups. Uh, so all, all of, and, and that imposter syndrome that we're just talking about the, the foam, the, we didn't talk about FOMO then, but you know, this, do, do I belong? Do I, you know, am I, should I be here? And, and then, and then the drugs and alcohol that kind of smooth all that over and, and make it appear on the surface that, mm that things are okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that then took me off on, on, uh, on a path that you can read all about in my first book, Balancing oh. Act. Got it. I didn't know it was going to be, oh, juicy parts in there. Okay. Yeah, We're yeah, going to learn a, more. It's, it's kind of half autobiography, half business book. That's so it's a great it's a series of personal lessons that, uh, Hey, this is what I do. Uh, fun fact, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> or, or this is not advisable. Um, that, that kind of thing. Sounds like my first book. Yeah. Here's my yeah. life lesson. Don't do the stuff I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so that in early twenties, uh, got together with the love of my life, Linda, oh. and we, we've spent the rest of the time together. We are divorced and remarried fun. Another, I didn't know that. In fact, yeah. So, you know, it's been, uh, you know, it's not all roses and unicorns and puppies. But you dogs. got two honeymoons with this lady. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, 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 uh, and, and two wedding anniversaries yes. that now, that now both of us don't remember because ah. there's two, there's, there's, there's two too many, you know, we just, yes. every, every day is, uh, is, uh, is, is the anniversary. So, oh. but it was at, early twenties, you know, like, wow, I got to get my act together. Yeah. I got my, fortunately, my parents were educate are, uh, were educators, are educators. And so that, that, you know, that, that knowledge, that, that knowledge that I had to get back to school, the, uh, it was not a great idea to drop out of high school, which I did, uh, and, uh, try to be a rock star, bad idea. Um, but, uh, you know, went back to school, ultimately got PhD. Uh, wow. Yeah. Look at so. how, look at that pattern that you divorced, but then married your, your same wife again, you quit school, went back and did it better. I'm sure the remarriage, you don't go into that lightly. And no. so you, you tend to go, ah, that's not working. Okay. Let's do it better. <laughs> it's a pretty yeah. good pattern. <laughs> uh, if I could go back to earlier versions of myself i on my show i ask a time machine question of all of my love guests. that love and, that uh, you know what's the what's the message that you would send to an earlier version of yourself mm -hmm. uh, i have many <laughs> yeah true who doesn't but that is such I a great many. question because it's a way to tap back into it and think wow you know i, I kind of forgive that younger self that was kind of stupid and thought they knew everything <laughs> yeah yeah, but you, sign, you did um, go ahead. On one of the signs behind me, I have grace, dignity, compassion, three of the words that I like to live by. And those would be, I'd slip that piece of paper to my earlier self. Just oh. give yourself some grace, mm. live, act with dignity, and have compassion for both yourself and others. Um, that would have helped a lot. That's huge. <laughs> would a younger us have listened? Mm, we maybe. might have said, oh, those those old people talk in their talk. But maybe yeah. if you say, hang yeah. on to this piece of paper, you're going to need this. <laughs> had I shown up not as me, but as somebody has had I shown yes. up as Getty Lee. <laughs> <There you> <laughs> well, now you know who you can be for Halloween. <laughs> Well, I and Betty you can hand those my, out. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he is. Um, I I don't have any idols, but uh, if there if I did, he would be right up there. 
<laughs> oh, that's amazing. I, yeah. I think that's great. Now, tell people again how we can find we've got uh, your two different podcasts. Let's give those a plug. Yeah, so every all things Andy Temp, uh, Andrew Tempty are at andrewtempty.com. Don't put a P in my last name. There is no P. So A-N-D-R-E-W-T-E-M-T-E.com. That's where all of my stuff is. I've got two books, uh, Balancing Act, and then The Balanced Business is a management operating system. It's more of a serious business book uh, on how to... Uh, install my management operating system into your business, uh, which is a blend of organizational health and continuous improvement. I've got the Balancing Act podcast, the Saturday Morning Muse. And uh, on May the 1st, we're doing a live version of the Balancing Act podcast at the Maine in downtown La Crosse. We'll be live streaming it so that if you're not in La Crosse, you can still participate uh, each, each, uh, all the net proceeds of the $35 cost at the door are going to educational scholarships at Western Technical College. So you come see us at the main, you're going to get, you're going to be able to watch three episodes being created in one evening. And it, I've got interstate sound there, three cameras set up. It's like being at a television show. So um, yes, it is actually a, a nice cool television cool, show and cool comedy club kind of a vibe. Right. So. Oh, and the main downtown is historic downtown yeah. lacrosse. It is a fantastic venue. They spoil you there. They've got this great stage. They're going to set up all the seating. 35 at the door and you are supporting scholarships. That's May 1st. So don't miss May Day, May Day. It'll be really fun. (laughs) And then the names of your podcasts, we've got the Balancing Act podcast. And then we can also find you with the Saturday Muse. The Saturday Morning Muse. And we just launched that as a podcast. I'd been doing that uh, on the website and uh, with YouTube videos previously, but we just... uh, we just dropped uh, 24 episodes out on uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all the all the places where you can get your podcasts. Love that. And got to plug the band. Um, you're the leader of the Midwest-based rock band called The Remainders. And yes. the band is active in a number of fundraising events and committees in the La Crosse, Wisconsin area. And I know you travel far beyond. But the remainders, if you want to give a yeah. shout out where we can do, do you have your own website for that or a Facebook page where we can? Yeah, we've got the remainders.com. Um, when you look at it, it looks like their remainders, but it's <laughs> the remainders. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we, uh, we have a, uh, a Facebook page, obviously, and uh, we have an album coming out this summer. Oh, uh, fantastic. So, uh, 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 we have original music that's out on Spotify right now. So you can find us on Spotify, but we have a full proper album. We're going to press vinyl and, and, you know, to have a, have a real record that you can, that, that you can uh, hold on to and put on a turntable. Yeah. I love that vinyl's coming back. That is amazing. Mm-hmm. So we've got a lot of show notes to add just so everybody can find the books, the podcast, the May 1st event, the remainders and, all things Andrew, Andy, Tempty, no P in Tempty. And now I'm going to ask you before I let you skedaddle, yeah. I know you're a busy, busy man. Can you please share a dare or prank story, one you've done or had done to you? Yes. So uh, I'm not a prank or a dare kind of a guy, but when I was um, probably 12, maybe a little younger, my cousin and I, my cousin Joe and I used to like to camp in his mother and father's backyard. So we'd <laughs> set up a tent. Uh, it's almost always during allergy season and we would, uh, <laughs> tent would be full of uh, n- napkins and Kleenex by the right. morning. It was awful, right? Yeah. So we're, So we're out there and the parents are having a big party inside the house lots of people coming over and Ray Stevens had a song called the streak. I remember the streak. Okay. Woo, woo. So for your listeners, look it up. <laughs> I'm sure it's out there. It's called the streak Ray Stevens. <laughs> so my cousin and I were sitting in the tent and we go, 
This is a great idea. Let's let's go streaking and let's streak through the house. Now, for the younger people, they may not call it that. This is where we are sans clothing and yes, cruising we com- fast. <laughs> we are completely naked and we are running our buns off, literally. So my 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 eleven year old cousin and I we we took all our clothes off and we ran out of the tent opened up the door, ran through the house, came back out, totally mortified everybody in the house. Our parents uh, uh, were were completely mortified. <laughs> and uh, we were very, very proud of ourselves. Oh, dear. Do you recall any punishment? Because that's always fun, too, to say, oh, and I went without dinner or something no. like that. No, because we woke up the next morning and we both looked like uh, our heads were uh, pump- were pumpkins because we had, we'd, we'd uh, you know, it was ragweed season and yes. we were all sw- swollen up and uh, da, 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 da. so no. We... So now when you get allergies, do you feel the need to strip? Just, just asking for myself. Um, no, uh, <laughs> it, it's not, uh, you know, parading around the house, uh, sans clothing is, uh, now that the kids are out of the house is kind right. of satisfying, but right, right. Naked time. I, I think that comes with, 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 uh, with age anyway. Well, I was about <laughs> six or five and, I my brother and sister dared me to run outside naked, just run one time around the house. Mom yeah. was in the backyard talking to the neighbor and I did it. And of course I didn't realize, of course they were going to lock the door and we lived on main street. Of course they were going to lock the door. They got in big trouble. And yeah. And now I like naked time too. You're more aerodynamic. You can get places faster. That's right. That's right. (laughs) I am so honored to have chatted with you. I'm going to say it again. I am so honored to have chatted with you today, Andrew Tempty. And remember that we can only be strangers once. And I invite you to stay weird. I am weird.